David, it might help if you unmute yourself. Yeah, um, uh, sorry about that. Our laptop is freezing momentarily every every so often. So uh, I hope you, <laughs> that might be good actually. We'll, we'll see how it works out. Anyway, as we've heard, um, tomorrow is Sidra Parashat Vayugash. We're almost at the end of the narrative concerning Joseph and his brothers. So let's just remind ourselves of where we're up to. Liberated from jail after interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, Joseph experiences a dramatic transformation. He's appointed the viceroy of Egypt, and he serves in this position through the seven years of plenty and into the years of famine, and then he sees his brothers again as they come to Egypt to buy food. One of our most famous biblical commentators, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman the Ramban, also known as Nachmanides, a 13th century Spanish scholar, at this point launches into a criticism of Joseph and his behavior towards his father, Jacob. Says the Ramban, one can only wonder how Joseph couldn't have sent even one letter to his father to inform him and to comfort him. And you know, I think it's difficult to disagree. Did Joseph really not appreciate that Jacob would have been devastated by his sudden disappearance? Surely Joseph must have guessed that his father had been mourning him for years. Yep, he makes no effort to get in touch. Couldn't he have phoned home, sent a postcard, sent some sort of a message, something to tell his father that all was well. In fact, he could have told his father everything was rather better than well. He'd achieved unimaginable success. Why did Joseph behave with such apparent disregard and thoughtlessness? How could he be so callous? Well, the Ramban goes on to address this matter. And so, for example, does a, a, a medieval Italian commentator called Sforno. However, I want to share an approach which is taken by a contemporary Israeli scholar. Rabbi Dr. Yoel bin Nun. Now, Rabbi bin Nun lectures widely on Tanakh, and he writes about Tanakh, and he was a, he was a founder of Yeshivat Haritzion, which is um, the famous Israeli shiva, center of religious Zionism and modern orthodoxy, and, you know, we often refer to it as the Gush. Says Rabbi bin Nun, the fact of the matter is that Joseph had no way of knowing that his brothers had lied to his father. He didn't know he was supposed to have been gobbled up by a wild animal. And so for years, he was plagued with a question. I'm supposed to be a beloved son, so why has nobody come looking for me? After all, Egypt was only a six-day journey from where the family lived, and Jacob certainly had the wherewithal to mount a search. So where was everyone? Why was there no search party? And not only that. Joseph wonders, why did his father send him to go looking for his brothers in the first place? Jacob knew there was no love lost between Joseph and his brothers. So didn't it cross his mind that things might get out of hand? Why didn't Joseph send some kind of a chaperone with, with Joseph to keep an eye on things? And indeed, we're reminded of this potential danger in the relationship between Joseph and his brothers in another commentary on the Joseph story, this one by the contemporary English sage, Reb Tim Rice, who writes, not only is he tactless, but he must be rather dim, for there's the 11 others and there's only one of him, well, be that as it may, stuck in an Egyptian cell, Joseph has plenty of time on his hands to reflect on all of this. And Rabbi Bin Nun suggests that Joseph comes to the mistaken, yet to him, inescapable conclusion that Jacob was somehow complicit in the brother's actions. And then further, adding two and two and making five, he wonders whether someone else, perhaps his brothers, perhaps Leah, perhaps even a divine instruction, who knows, had persuaded Jacob to throw Joseph out of the family, just like Ishmael and Asaph had been cast off in earlier generations. You know, it seems that Joseph wasn't so beloved after all. And so, after years of these thoughts buzzing around in his brain, 
Joseph arrives at a grudging acceptance of his fate. He isn't wanted. Yet despite all of that, he determines to live his life according to the traditions and values of his family, even if he's estranged from them. This sentiment is expressed by Rabbi bin Mun in the name he gives to his older son. He calls the child Menasha, because Nashani elokemet kolamali kolbetavi. Nashani, God had made me forget. Sounds like Menasha. Nashani elokem, God had made me forget all of my problems, ve'et kolbetavi, and my father's entire household. So when his brothers suddenly show up in Egypt, Joseph is determined to root out the truth. And everything he does from then on is designed to obtain information concerning his father's apparent rejection of him. Finally, his brother Judah, rising in defense of Benjamin, and without realizing the significance of what he's saying, tells Joseph what for so many years he has been so desperate to hear. Your servant, my father, says Judah, said to us, you know, my wife, that's Rachel, all me sons. One has left me, and I presumed Taref Toraf, he's been torn to bits for Lower Itif Adhena, and I haven't seen him since. Suddenly, like several tons of bricks, the truth hits him. His father hadn't searched for him because he thought he was dead. He hasn't been rejected after all. And with that realization, Joseph can hold no, no longer hold himself back. He sends all of the servants out of the room, and then in a dramatic and highly charged emotional outburst, he stuns his brothers with, Ani Yosef, I'm Joseph. Now, I don't know about you, but I find this a really compelling idea. And you may or may not agree with me, but whether you do or you don't, there's a much, I think, a wider importance here. You know, they say that familiarity breeds contempt. And even if we're not exactly contemptuous of them, we're all so familiar with the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the rest of the Hevra that there's a danger that they turn into nothing more than water off a duck's back. But the stories of Tanakh are a lot more difficult to understand than we sometimes think. They're not really some sort of comfortable fireside fairy stories despite all the cute books of Torah stories that you can buy for children. That's not to suggest, by the way, that children shouldn't be taught Bible stories, but we need to remind ourselves that stories of Tanakh are just are more than just stories. And the story of Joseph and his brothers is a particularly good example. The stories in Tanakh are adult, subtle, and nuanced. And as the Joseph story, and indeed so much of Sefer Bereshit has already shown us, these stories are complex narratives concerning complex people. Shabbat Shalom. Well done. Shkoyach. Very, very nice. Lovely. Nice to have over. Thank you very, very much. And uh, of course, there is a whole question, which I asked last year or two years ago, please, I can't remember when I asked it. Yeah. Actually, you asked me on the way home from Shul one day. What? Well, this, this time last year, you said to me, we were walking home from Shul, and you said to me, why didn't Joseph send a postcard? Ah, is that, um, it was, it, was it me who asked you? Okay. I remember 12 months later. Uh, okay, no, I was, I was more concerned, actually, um, this year is um, actually... Who was the one who sold Joseph? It's not yeah. so simple. You know, everybody see, he actually says, you, you sold me, you were the brothers, you sold me to, uh, to, uh, you sold me to Egypt. But the truth is he didn't, they didn't. And if you read it very carefully, you will see the, the, it was the Ishmaelites Ishmaelite sold him and they sold him on to the Midianites and the Midianites to the Midianites and the Midianites to the Ishmaelites and then to Egypt. So it, it's, you know, it becomes a, a rather interesting, uh, interesting thing um, to say um, over there. But actually, the Rush Bum, who was a grandson of Rashi, he actually says, quite interestingly, he says, um, you know, really, um, it doesn't matter who sold him. They let it happen. It's enough. 
the fact that they let it happen, you know, what if they did it or they or just they stood by whilst it was being done, that is enough. If you're quiet, if you don't stand up, you don't run for justice when something is wrong, then uh, I think that's uh, that was my little uh, that, that's my little thought on that. Now let's start with um, Kabbalah Shabbat. Um, I'm going to put you all on share. Here's the Adid Nefesh. Um, don't worry, everybody's gone. Um, let me just, okay. Let me just, okay. Okay. I'm going to start with the Adid Nefesh. Yedid Nefesh Avorach Amor Meshoi Chavdecha Eldot <laughs> Adonoe <laughs> The seas lape, the highest Allah, see him cause lom, for seek ye hem no, the hameha, the husana, a benahu veha, he zekamo. Nirsaf, Nirsafi, Lilo Specifares, O Zeha, Ele Hamda, Hamda Libi, the Husana, the Yati Salam, Egonena, O Felois Habibi Allah. Esukas shaloi mecho Tari revets mikvoidecha Nagila benismecha vach Mahe eho kiva moed Vachaneidu he may or no. Did he am mamma? Did he am mamma? Did he am mamma? Ya, ya, did I'm mamma? Did he am mamma? Did he am mamma? Did he am mamma? Ya, ya, did I, ya, ya, did I, ya, 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 did I, ya, 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 did he am mamma? Ya, ya, did I, die, die, did he am mamma? Did he am mamma? Did he am mamma? Ya, ya. the Rana Ladonai Noria Let's all ye shame. The Kapma Fama Persoyata is a mirror. Noria Loy Godola Donai. Okay, so we're 
aber in himmlischer Nacht bedauert. Wo man teile war heim, wer heimen lo ja tut da kai. Aschen, nicht bati wie api. Im ja
Lai, 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 la khatoy dili kras kala, pahani ka poste kabala, la khatoy dili kras kala, pahani ka poste kabala. We now continue with Yigdal, which is to be found on page. Let me just go back. Hold on. Let me let me change that. Oh, there we are. Oh, we're all back there. Okay, we're going to go back to Yigdal, which is found on page twelve. Please turn to page twelve. Yigdal Elohim Achai VeYihishabach Nimzavia Heinei Zalmetziusoi Echad VeYen Yachid. Hino Adon Olam, Lachal Nahotza, Yorek Adula So, Umal Chuso, Sheva Nebua So, Nesano, Elan Chester Gula So, Vesifato, Lachamba Yisrael, Kamo Hoshe Oint, Navi Umahabit, Esther Munoso, Tona Zemes, Nosani Amoel, Ayat Nevion, Eman Beisoy, Loya Khalif Khoel, the Loya Midoso, Nio Ilohamim, the Zulaso, the Elia Dea, Sesole, Numa Pitless of Tava, the Kat Masoy. Gomelish has at Camifalo, no saying the Russia Rockery Shasoi, Yishlak Lakates Hayamim, Meshikainu, Hitos Mehake Kates Yeshua Soi together, May Simia Hayel, Bado Hasto, Baru Hate Hayat. Shame to he lost all. May seem ye high a yell. Baroh Castle. Baroh had a heart. Shame to he lost Oh, thank you. You got it in there, Danny. You got it in there. Shikoyah to you. Yeah, Shikoyah. Bye bye. Shikoyah.